Hello, I'm Eric Reno, and this is a video for Tipsquirrel.com, the website for everything Photoshop, Lightroom, Adobe Camera Raw, and Photoshop Elements. In this video, I'll be creating concentric circles to start a logo and putting text on a path. More specifically, I'll be putting text in a circle. Let's jump into Photoshop and find out how it's done. So here we are in Photoshop and the first thing I need to do is open a new document. So I'm going to go to File and New. I'm going to call this one Round Logo. I'm going to make it 800 pixels wide and then just tab down till I get to Height 800 and Resolution of 300 pixels per inch. RGB Color 8 bits fine. Background White. Click OK. We're off and running. Now to get the concentric circles, what I'm going to do is use the Ellipse tool. There we go. Now the great thing about the ellipse tool is I can click down and then tell it exactly what size I want it to be. And I can draw them all from the same point, from the center. But clicking on the dead center every time is not an easy task at all. So it needs a bit of preparation. And in fact, the preparation is probably going to take longer than drawing the circles, but it saves a lot of time in the long run. So I'm going to click Cancel. I'm going to go to View, New Guide, and Vertically, choose 50% and press enter and view new guide and go horizontal and 50% 50% press enter so now we've got our cross but still it's very easy just to be a few pixels off so we want to keep zooming in but that's going to be a waste of time so I'm going to go to window arrange and new window for round logo and sure enough it's opened up another window but I can't see it so I'm going to go to Window, Arrange, and go Two Up Vertical. And it puts them side by side. So if I go and get the brush tool here and paint on this one, you'll notice that it paints on this one too. It's the same document, but open twice. I'm going to Control Z to undo that. If I go and get the Move tool, I can move these around, so one's much smaller than the other. And if I get to that kind of stage, and then I can on this one, click on the tab here just to highlight this one. I can come across into the middle and then zoom in. I'm going to try and keep it roughly in the center if I can. It's not easy to find if you lose it. There's a word of warning for you. There we go. Because it's so small, it's very easy to scooch past. That'll do me. There we go. We're as close as we need to be now. Good. Now, if I go and get the ellipse tool, I'll make sure that I'm making a shape. I can click on this cross here with some certainty that I'm getting it right in the middle. And then I can choose for my first circle 800 pixels by 800 pixels. And from the center should be checked. And I'm going to click OK. And there's our first one. It's the wrong color, but that's easily sorted. I'm going to click on the swatch for fill at the top here. And then I can click on this icon here to bring up the color picker. And using RGB, I can dial in the exact colors I want, which is 0, 100, and then 70. And click OK. And now my circle is exactly as I want it. With the ellipse tool again, I can go and click on the cross to create my second circle. This time 750 by 750 from center. Click OK. Now we can't see it because it's a green circle on top of a green circle, but in this case I want a stroke on it of white, and I want the stroke to be three points. That's that circle done. One more, let's go in and click on the cross, and then this one wants to be 435 by 435 from the center. Click OK, but this one wants to be black, and it wants to be four points. And we're done. We've now created our concentric circles for our round logo. As easy as that. So now we need to put some text around it. Well, I'm going to use the ellipse tool again. And I'm going to use my trick of clicking in the middle on my new window. But this time I want to create a path. So I click on there. And this time I want my path to be 515 by 515 and click OK. Now you can't see anything has changed, but there is a new path. There it is. 
but if I click on the tab for this window, you should then see the path appear. There we go, nice. Now I go over and get the text tool and I'm going to make sure that everything is reset. So I'm going to open the character palette. If you haven't got it here, you might want to go to Window and Character. And with the Flyout menu, just choose Reset Character. And if you've been fiddling about with anything else, it will make sure that it's all back to its defaults. I may as well stay in the character palette and I'm going to choose my font. I'm going to type it in, F-R-E-I. And there it is, Freight Sans Black. Now I've searched the internet, this is available for free and it's also available to buy, which it should be, I really don't know. So I'm not gonna give you any links just in case I'm giving you one for free and it should be bought and I'm getting you to buy something that's free. So I'm not going to chance it. I'm going to make it 30 points high um, and everything else can stay as it is. Let's do white, good. Now when I bring my cursor back onto my circles here and come down to the line or the path, you'll see how it changes from the normal text box to this one with a squiggly line through it. And that means you're going to type on a path. I've also made sure that I'm center justified by the way, so that when I click in the middle, that will be the middle of my text. So I just click down and then I can start typing. Tip squirrel, squirrel, good. Now I ask you to reset all these because these do affect how your text will appear. For example, we can make this much wider, like this. Let's go back to 100%, shall we? Or we can change the distance between all the letters as well, should we wish. See how they're much more spaced out. But for me, I'm gonna keep it all as the defaults for this particular one. But it is there and it's probably something I'll come back and fiddle with a bit later on. Good. Let's now put on the other text, which is PS Nuts we want down the bottom. So let's go and collect our path again, just make sure it's all selected. And again, with our text, I'm gonna come down here and then in the middle, our cursor changes, click, and I can choose PS, or I can type PS Nuts. Now, unfortunately, it's upside down, but that's okay. Remember how I highlighted this path? Let me go and get my direct selection tool. Uh, come over to my work path. And if I come across into this, excuse me, into the PS Nuts type path and come into this little area here, you'll notice how the cursor now changes to one with two black arrows. If I click and then drag, and I'm dragging it upwards, you can see that it snaps in. Now, what I was doing there was I was actually moving accidentally left to right, which is why this is moving left to right. So if you'd wanted to place it somewhere different in your circle, that's exactly how you do it. But I just wanted it up and then I can release. Now, although it's the right way up, it's in the inside of the circle, not the outside, but that's okay. We've got another little button here, which I can then click and drag across. And of course I'm doing it the wrong way. Let's go the other way. So I'm going to the left now to make it a negative number and then back just to squeeze it up and then there we are we have now created all our letters around our circle and they are perfectly aligned now let's put those stars on shall we so i'm going to use a shape this time a custom shape tool and there's my star if you haven't got a star in your drop down list you'll need it from shapes but i've already done that so that's the one i'm after let's click on that one now i'm going to hold shift and drag it out, but you'll remember that I changed this to a path. So I'm drawing a path, I didn't want to do that. I want to change this back to a shape. If I hold down shift, there we go, that's better. And I might pop that just so it's on the line there. Good, if I go back to my layers, it'll be there somewhere, there it is. And let's uh, change that one, shall we? Let's change the color of that to the white. Good. Now I'm gonna control J to duplicate that and then get my move tool and drag it across. And there we have it. We've now created our logo. For me, there's just one thing missing, which is the head in the middle. So I'm gonna go and get that. It's actually on another screen and I'm just gonna click and drag it in. I'm gonna hold shift so it goes into the middle. There it is, let's click okay. It's gone into Adobe Camera Raw there. 
and I'm going to say OK. But uh, it's a smart object. I don't want it as a smart object. I'm going to rasterize that. I need it the other way around. I need it white on black. So I go to Image and then Adjustments and I can inverse that. Here we go, Invert. And then you can change the blend mode from Normal to Screen. And sure enough, there's my logo. I'm going to Control T to transform it. Hold down Shift just to keep it all nice and straight. There we go. And I'm all done. So I can close this window down. I can then hide or clear my guides. Let's clear that out of the way. Control zero to fit it on the page. And there we are. I'm all done. There's my logo. I might want to have a little bit of a shuffle around with some of the things. The stars don't look very central to the, to the lettering, but they're easy fixes. I'm Eric Renault. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. I'll see you next time.